I have a problem. I mean, really though, what was I supposed to do? The Ducati's broken and it's really nice outside. Like, fix it or something? I... No. Hello and welcome to my never-ending descent into madness and financial ruin. This is my latest project, though honestly, despite its looks, it's a bit less of a project than you might think. This is a 2013 Kawasaki Ninja 300. This is the newest vehicle that I've ever owned and the first fuel-injected bike. And as you heard, it does run. That's right, I bought something that runs. So if you're looking at this bike right now thinking, Jake, that thing looks like it's been stolen. Well, then you're right, because it has been stolen, but not by me. This bike is actually a theft recovery which, slightly better, yeah, a theft recovery. This bike was stolen, abused, with absolutely no mechanical sympathy whatsoever, and then recovered by the police, at which point it was sold to me by the rightful owner who decided he didn't want to look at it anymore because it's cursed. That's right, cursed, because it got stolen while sitting outside of his house waiting for the insurance adjuster to come look at it after he got hit by a car turning left in front of him on the street. So not only then is this a theft recovery, but it was also wrecked. I know, I know, you can congratulate me for my fantastic purchasing decisions in a minute, but first I wanna walk you through everything that makes this bike um, well, a total nightmare, but what it is. So if you're into motorcycles, or even if you're not, you've probably heard of the Kawasaki Ninja name. It started out back in the 70s with some of their larger bikes to denote the really sport-focused stuff. And over time, it was applied to all of their full-fairing sport bikes. In the 80s, the Ninja name was given to the Ninja 250, their entry-level bike, which has long been regarded as one of the best starter motorcycles out there. It was in 2008 redesigned, sort of a facelift sort of thing. They gave it some new looks, uh, tweaked the frame a bit, but kept the 250cc carbureted engine. Then in America, we stopped getting that, and in 2013, we got this, which is a 300cc fuel-injected twin-cylinder and in my opinion, one of the best starter motorcycles out there for several reasons. The first reason is pretty obvious. It is a small motorcycle. It is very light, it is low power, it is very manageable. This 300cc twin is a gem of an engine. It manages to be lots of fun without getting into too much trouble. You're not gonna whiskey throttle this thing up a tree, but you're still gonna have a bit of fun ripping through the gears on your way up to 40 miles an hour through town without arousing too much suspicion. The other big thing I really like about this bike is it is fuel injected. You're not gonna end up like me pulling your carbs out every weekend so that you can get out whatever garbage got in them this time. And that means more time riding, more time learning how to ride, and less time swearing and kicking things. This bike also has a very low... I had no idea that was like that. This bike also has a very low seat height, which is good for not having to tiptoe it around if you're on the shorter side like a lot of novice riders are. And last but not least, it is cheap. These are very cheap bikes. You can pick these up for under two grand if you look, which, well, um, under two grand in much better shape than this one, which is a pretty good deal for a first motorcycle and one that you can keep for a little while. The 300 graduates from being something that most people will probably want to get rid of as they get more competent to something you just kind of want to keep around because it's good enough and really excels at around town jaunts that larger bikes are just a bit of a hassle for, like the Ducati. So if it sounds like I'm stalling, trying to pad the length of this video to get to 10 minutes, how dare you accuse me of such a thing and be right about it. So without further ado, here's everything wrong with my Kawasaki Ninja 300, starting with what I just discovered is the, uh, the seat does not appear to be attached. I actually, does this just slide forward? I have no idea. It, it probably comes off somehow, but uh, 
uh, exactly how is beyond me. So the seat is not attached. Uh, the tank and all the plastics have been rattle canned this absolutely terrible looking uh, uh, flat black. Like there's so many textures going on here. I don't even know how you mess up spray paint quite that bad, but that is, uh, that's pretty terrible. Obviously all the plastics are missing. There should be a big fairing here and instead there is nothing. At least it makes oil changes pretty easy. And you may have noticed this cloth here. That is because the air filter and this air filter cover are both missing. I have Absolutely no idea why. I guess uh, more induction noise that way. This is the right side brake lever and yeah, it's just, uh, it's hanging on by literal threads. There's been, uh, it's been broken off apparently and then reattached with some metal straps and some string and some hose clamps and all kinds of MacGyver nonsense. Uh, that, that doesn't really, hold your weight very well. That's uh, that's incredibly sketchy and um, I want it to disappear from this plane of existence immediately. I already covered it up because, uh, well, I've been riding this around a little bit to suss out what all is going on with it. Um, they just kind of angle grindered a big slot in the bottom of the exhaust to make it louder, which is a shame because it has a really nice sort of subtle sporty exhaust note and I, I actually quite like it. So. The hose clamp will do for now, but we'll get that welded at some point. Of course, the thing that everyone has to do when they steal a bike in order to actually get away from it with it is to absolutely destroy the ignition. As you can see, there's there's no sticking a key in that. And actually, uh, the way you start this bike is uh, with this. Oh, hang on, it's actually fallen down in there away. Ow, there we go with this. Uh, what's left of the original ignition. And um, then you just kind of plug it in to the wiring harness sticking out here. Yep. And there we go. 9,780 miles. Just gonna, just gonna leave that there where it's safe. These mirrors confused me at first. I was wondering why on earth there was all this JB weld but I think that's because the uh, these holes here are not threaded on this bike because the factory mirrors mount to the fairings. And so this is uh, not supposed to be here. So I bet there's just no threads cut there. So these were just shoved in and JB welded and call it a day. The other thing that you've got to do when stealing a bike is pry open the fuel lid somehow. And this one's been pried open and put back together with some uh, what look like just random wood screws. I have a new fuel lid on the way as well as a new ignition. I'm just hoping that I can either chase the threads in the tank itself or find some other way of actually attaching the new fuel lid because uh, yeah, that's, that's just all kinds of a mess. The rear plastics are all gone, of course. There's no fairings here on the side anymore. There is the under tray, but that's, a, that's about it. This is the most shot chain I've ever seen. There's a solid, an incredible amount of slop and about two inches of side to side. It is completely munched and it makes the worst noises when you ride. This headlight and the, the lights in general, take a look at this. You've got, uh, where is it? Here's the wiring harness that went to the original headlight. Looks like there's just a white wire shoved in here and held in with tape. Um, oh, there's a bunch of wires that have been cut. That's fun. I'll have to find a wiring diagram so I can figure out what those go to. That wire goes into the light. Uh, looks like there's some wire nuts there attaching that. And the ground wire comes out to the ignition where it is held in place with a screw jammed through a hole. Fantastic. That is an A plus installation job right there. This fender, I really don't know what's going on. It it doesn't even remotely resemble a factory fender and it's not attached properly. I'm not, I'm not sure what this is off of or why it's here, but uh, yep, there we go. This is the lock cylinder here for the, uh, I guess you'd call it a trunk. The pillion seat removal, um, that would have a key and it, There'd be a, you know, this would turn on a cam and you would put the key in here, but uh, obviously that is all gone. So uh, at least you can pull that and still open it up and stuff. Can't get it back too easy though. There we go. 
Yep. So obviously I've got a bit of a basket case on my hands, but I can say it does ride rather well. It pulls great. The engine is a peach, runs smooth as can be, no weird rattles, rides perfectly straight, seems to be an absolutely solid platform. Platform for what? I'm not entirely sure yet. I'm not gonna try to put it back to original. Buying the fairings and stuff would just be far too expensive to even consider. Maybe if someone had like a bike that blew up and they're selling the whole fairings off of it super cheap, I could put in the fairings from another bike on here and it'd be kind of funny. Something like a, a Panigale would be absolutely hysterical to put Panigale fairings on a 300cc, but I don't, I doubt, I don't see that happening. What's probably going to go on here is uh, I'm going to keep the Street Fighter look, uh, which is code for I dropped my bike and can't afford to replace the plastics, so I just rolled with it, um, which is an unfortunate connotation because I really like the look personally. Uh, I'm, ke I'm keeping the stock exhaust, the stock airbox. I'm not going to tune it or anything. A power commander costs me more than the bike, so, which is just ridiculous. I'm just gonna try and get this back to a base level of functionality, maybe give it a neat paint job, and then just enjoy having a reliable motorcycle because that's a really rare feeling for me. But Jake, I hear you ask, what did you pay for all of this magnificence? How much US currency did it cost you to become the caretaker of this fine piece of machinery. Well, uh, it was about six hundred dollars. Yep, six Benjamins for a running and a riding motorcycle. I think it is pretty safe to call that the cheapest Ninja 300, if not the cheapest running and riding fuel injected motorcycle in the United States right now. And now that I'm done ripping off Tyler Hoover, I'm going to go order some parts. We're gonna need the key cylinder set. We're gonna need this brake pedal, definitely. We're gonna need an air filter, air box cover. Uh, I don't think I'll worry about fairings, but we are going to need a tail tidy because it looks like the tail's been removed here and there's nowhere to put a license plate. We're gonna need some turn signals, front and rear. We're gonna want a new headlight, some mirrors, and probably gonna have to fab up some sort of bracket for this gauge cluster because, because uh, look at this, this this is bananas. Nobody wants this. It looks like the plastic's already hosed under there, but eventually we'll get to paint and we'll get to riding. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll be able to get like a track suit and uh, go ride this thing down at Hallett or something like that. But uh, uh, considering that a track suit costs about twice what I paid for this bike, I will probably just stick to riding it at um, perfectly sane, legal, and prudent speeds um, around Wichita. So thank you everyone for watching. Your views give me hope and encouragement to further drive myself into poverty. So go ahead and hit subscribe and leave a comment if you wanna see more stuff like this. I'll be working on this and the Ducati and my Miata probably, maybe some more stuff with the inside. Who knows, we'll, we'll see what's happening in the future. Thanks for watching. Did y'all notice I got a new GoPro? We got that spicy 4K footage now, and it's all like stable and not giving me a headache. That hair is giving me a headache though. I got a serious case of helmet head. Huh.